Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and today we're doing Einstein Analytics Data Flow Basics Part 2. We're going to add additional rows to existing data sets using the append transformation. So since this is a basics video, we will be covering the process end to end. I'm going to start by hitting create and clicking on data set, saying continue for CSV. Uh, I'm going to drag my CSV not into this outer area here, no, no into this little box in the middle. This is what happens if I drag it to the outer area. It opens the CSV in Chrome, which can be uh, a real pain in the butt and kind of confusing, but what you gotta do, hit continue, drag it into this box in the middle. So this is append sample batch one dot CSV. So uh, this is just a bunch of metadata. You can ignore all this. Uh, schema files is very important for your metadata for identifying uh, different field types and all sorts of additional modifications that you can make. We will not be going into that depth at this time. You also get to select the app and don't let the shape of these boxes fool you. You can only put it in one app. So then you hit next and you're gonna get a preview of what your data looks like. Um, now, in my case, it's actually showing all rows because I've only got three rows of data. So I'm kind of surprised it didn't expand all the way. I've still got a scroll bar to work with here. Usually it'll grab, I believe, the first hundred rows or so. So go ahead and make sure the metadata types are correct. One thing to watch out for is measures that have dollar signs or parentheses around negatives or comma delimination, uh, like, you know, thousand separators with a comma that might very likely get picked up as a dimension. So you're gonna to need to clean those formats. Um, also, Wave's favorite date format is year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, day, day. If the format is anything else, it will probably yell at you. Uh, with manual CSV uploads, you get a little bit more uh, leeway, but especially when you're dealing with appends, just format your dates like this, you know. Um, so you can also, uh, while we're here, we can do some modifications to the label and the field type. And again, any changes that we make here, that's going to be uploading that, uh, updating that schema file that we were just looking at. So, you know, if you want to add your currency symbol, your decimal symbol, your grouping symbol, which is your thousand separator, um, this interface has been greatly enhanced as of the winter 18 release. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. File is uploading. Okay, got it. And it's being queued to create, but it's three rows. I don't imagine it's going to take very long. So now uh, let's take a look at the data set that that created. Kick this baby over into table mode. And it is going to break out the, uh, the date subparts. Um, usually I get rid of those. By default, the values table is going to display the first 10 columns of a data set um, in alphabetical order. So you can update that and set the default values for your values table in the XMD. We will not be covering that in this video. So here's the data that I, uh, I added. Oh, get rid of these epics right here. So my date, my measure, and I believe I had my dimension too. Uh, these are uh, the, the, the rows and columns that have updated. Real simple data set, not a big deal. So now let's take a look. We'll go and create the next one. And this is going to be sample number two. So let's say, you know, a month goes by and I have a, a new batch of data that I want to update my external data set with. You know, a whole another three rows have been created and, you know, gosh, we got to get that data updated. So we can monitor it in the, in the data monitor if you've got massive files. The UI is going to accept up to half a gigabyte and you can push, I believe, 40 gigs through the API. Not 100% sure if that number's up to date. Uh, that could be outdated information. So now our second table, basically the same thing. Except instead of A, B, C, and 1, 2, 3, I've got X, Y, Z, and 7, 8, 9. I also changed the dates too. So now I want to append both of these together. And I want to have a single table. So I'm going to hop into my data flow editor for this. Now, normally in the past, we've used the SFDC digest to extract information from Salesforce and bring it into our data flow where we were able to act on it. But this time, we're going to use the edge mark transformation. And the edge mark transformation is for it, uh, data sets that already exist. Now, these could be created through um, digests and augments and all the other stuff that you've done. But it just means that this is already, uh, the edge mark is a data set that already exists in Einstein Analytics. It's already, you know, it al already counts toward your row caps. So we're going to call this get sample one. 
and uh, we're going to search for our data set by alias and we're going to say uh, append sample batch one that's my first data set now I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to do another edge mark get sample two append sample batch two I'm going to go ahead and hit save on that now, because these uh, data sets are already of an identical structure, I don't really need to do any kind of transformations to get them aligned. I just need to join them together and add the rows uh, from the first data set and the rows from the second data set together. So I'm going to use an append transformation. So I'm going to call it append one and two. My sources are going to be get sample one and get sample two. You must choose at least two sources, but I don't actually think there is a cap to this. Um, you know, or at least I've never encountered it. If you want to append, if you have uh, 12 months worth of data and you don't feel like combining them in Excel, do it over here. Um, you know, whatever, how, however you want to roll, it's fine. And we can now see that the append one and two is taking our two sampling edge marts as its input. So again, data flows move in a chain from your uh, from left to right. We're starting with our source data, and to the right we got our final register. So the register is what's actually going to commit it to uh, to the the to the database and save our data set. Can I include ampersands? Let's find out. Oh, looks like you can. So I'm going to use that append transformation as my source node. We can ignore the rest of that. Go ahead, hit save. Move that guy over where it looks more logical hit update data flow, hit continue, hop over to our data manager, select data flows, I believe we're on data flow five, data flow four, data flow four. Go ahead and hit the start button, and then we can check it out in the monitor and see what happens. So here we can see uh, real quick, we'll take a look and see these are our two um, uploads. We can see the load, the digest, the optimized and register, uh, the optimized register and the register. Uh, this is what every CSV uh, digest is going to look like. Really the only useful information that you can get out of this is count of rows. If you ever have some kind of messed up date format, you might get a warning on one of these and then it's gonna, this is going to be where you come to get your error log. So our data flow should be finished by now, and it is, so let's take a look at what happened. Get sample 1, get sample 2, append 1 and 2, optimize 1 and 2, register 1 and 2. So right here is where the magic happened. Append 1 and 2. We've got six input rows and six output rows. This is where the actual transformation happened. You do not get row counts on edge marts uh, like you do digests. I kind of wish you did. Um, that would be helpful, but you know. So now let's take a look at the data set that was created by this. So appended, and we're gonna kick it over to a values table, get rid of the date parts, and add my dim to the bottom. So look at that. We've got one, two, three, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. Now, one last thing I do want to point out. We created a third data set by doing this. And uh, what if this is going to be a regular process where we're going to be regularly um, overwriting, you know, like I've got my, you know, um, my monthly batch and I want to just keep adding and I don't want to create a new data set every time because I'm using this data set in dashboards and I don't want to have to go and swap that out. I want to overwrite the original data set with the updated information. So I, I want it to go over this one, two, three. I just want it to have the 789 on there as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my data flow. All right, I'm going to trash my register node over here and I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call this overwrite one. I'm going to set my source to append one and two. My alias, so I'm going to hit control E on a lens that already has it open. I'm going to go down to the bottom. Here we go. Append sample data batch one. Copy that guy on over. Put that here in our alias. I'm sure, who cares if we change the name while we're at it. Go ahead and hit save. Update the data flow. Back to the data manager. Data flows and recipes, and requeue number four. Back to the monitor, spam that reload button. Oh wow, it was done faster than I could get over here. Pretty cool. So now, when we look at sample batch one, 
I see that I've got my six rows. Kick it over to the values table just to validate our data. There it is. So we've got our A, B, C, our X, Y, Z, one, two, three, and seven, eight, nine. Total of six rows appended together on the original data set. So uh, I hope you learned something. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you already knew this and you still want to like and subscribe, go ahead, you know, tell a friend. And as always, thanks for watching.